Hey guys, so um, just a quick video on how to do some trading on Binance. Um, so I've been asked a couple of times of how do you do it. Um, so just a five minute, very quick, very easy how to do some trading. So first of all, if you look uh, at the Binance.com website, um, login in the top corner. Uh, it looks a little bit like a 90s design website if you see those very ugly banners. But overall, it's actually a pretty um, decent site for trading. So before logging in, you can already see your mar current markets. Um, so they have quite a bit of uh, different cryptocurrencies you can trade on. You can see the BTC, Bitcoin markets or the Ethereum markets, uh, and as well the value markets in terms of uh, US dollar. Now, after logging in, you can go to your um, initial exchange to do some initial trading. But in order to do some trading, you actually have need some uh, money as well. So a couple ways of doing it, you can buy some Bitcoin, transfer it over here, or um, you know buy some other coins, transfer them over to Bitcoin, and then start trading. Because the majority of coins are either traded in Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, to check your funds, just go to your funds section, deposit withdrawals. Now we have some funds on this one here. Um, on this day, 11th of January, markets are a little bit in, in mayhem, so uh, the value isn't as what it used to be, but that's okay. Um, so I have some land coin and I have some ripple coin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first sell a couple of these ripples just to um, get some um, uh, Bitcoin. Right? So in order to do that, I can go to my exchange. And there are two ex exchanges. One is the um, standard looking one and one is the, the dark one. We'll start with this one. This is the easiest one. So in order to go for Ripple, you need to find it first. right? So you can type in Ripple, but it won't f find it. So what you need to do is look for the pair. Now, Ripple is XRP. But if you're not entirely sure what it is, you can go to something like CoinMarketCap, for example. And search here. Ripple and it will give you Ripple and the XRP code as well. Yeah. So XRP, this is the the, the ones that we're trading in. And when we look at our interface, it might look a little bit scary. So first of all, what we see is the the graph. So the graph is really the trade volumes and the price. Right. So red means that they're selling. Green means that they're buying. Yeah. And you also have a, a in depth look, which gives you a little bit of the, the the price table and um, so what you can see here is there's a small volume selling for this particular price but then there's a lot of people that are actually holding on to their ripple coin right so this is often an indicator as well in terms of what is the market doing what are other people doing so when you see a sell-off for example you'll see that this gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller because people are reducing their prices and because they want to get rid of it. Right? So in this case, because I kind of want to keep some of my uh, Ripple, I'm just going to sell about 25 of them. Yeah. So at the moment, there are two tables here. We have our sell and our buy. Right? So somebody wants to buy for this amount and somebody wants to sell for that amount. So once these amounts match up, then a, a sell is processed. Yeah. So what I can do is I can see that you know they are asking about twelve nine ninety, and the lowest seller is nine nine six. Right. So you can see a gap here. There are twenty five hundred being sold for this price, and as I'm speaking, it's actually getting closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this particular the price of nine nine eight. So I'm going to click it, and you can see it matches up. Right. So what I have is I have 0 0.745, I'll add it in there, or numbers 7, seven, seven. okay, so at that price. Now what is important is you need to keep an eye on this, right? Um, because it goes so, so fast, so you might hit you might be too quick and then if there was a little price jump you know you you would be um, you know losing out on money now in this case it's actually not a price jump but it's actually a price drop right so my initial offer was nine nine eight 
but it's not anywhere in the top anymore so you can see people are selling off a little bit um, so I'll do something stupid which is be impatient and just go for a lower offer um, 950 yeah so when I press sell the order is placed and I can see the open order here and while I was there it was already gone because again the price matched up now if I was a little bit more patient I could have gotten a little bit more out of it because you know the low orders got picked up very quickly right so I, I sold it at not an ideal price however it doesn't matter um, it's just to showcase how you can do the trade now if we go back to our funds we should now see three funds in there so we have our ripple 75 now we have our Bitcoin and we have the Atlant. Right? So with this small amount of Bitcoin, I want to try to buy some new uh, funds. So there are a couple of ways we can we can find out the funds. And you know, with the cryptocurrency, I wouldn't recommend day trading or or instant trading because the price can drop so high and so low. Um, often enough, a, a common mistake is people see something like this, like the the Ven, which made a big price jump and they go oh wait, I'm, I want to get in, in on it often by the time it's already heavy green you're too late right so um, I wouldn't recommend going on the ones that have heavy price jumps um, I even would say go for the ones that have um, maybe a minor loss so that they can recover from okay. so a couple of coins that are interesting and let's have a look at the full uh, list um, so we can see we want to get some cheap ones now the Tron ones are very cheap but again they're you know these are pump and dump coins so I wouldn't really recommend them um, and if you look at the volume we can actually see what is being traded a lot right? trade velocity is very important because if you know it's actively traded you know there, there might be something going on for quick gain if it's not actively traded then you know you need to probably hold on to your coins uh, and wait a couple of days or a couple of weeks depending on, on what technology they're gonna bring to the table so scrolling all the way down you can see the lowest traded ones is this one here and then here are a couple more and they're not even getting you know percentages in there so we don't really know um, so let's have a look at okay CDT no search it up CDT coin dash so it's always important to you know learn a little bit about the coin um, because you know it's it's at the end of the day you don't know what's going on what the technology behind it is a lot of the, these coins are actually clones of different other coins so find out what they're doing and, and why they are special um, especially in cryptocurrency the the market is being populated by news so some coin is releasing a press release about partnerships with a b and c you often see a little price jump then another day you see warren buffett saying it's gonna have crash and you see a price drop right so it's not the company that is actually making the value it's actually the news that is making a lot of value so keep that in mind as well so we see here coin dash um, now I want to see what the ranking is ranking is 195 um, and ranking is actually pretty important because majority of, of new traders they go to coin market cap and they just see the top hundred and the only thing they see is the green stuff right? so they'll go for the green stuff and they go okay I need something that is green and that is cheap right so green and cheap isn't always perfect um, Let's have a look. So, yeah, for example, this thing here, red coin, right? Um, the star here indicates that it's pre mined, so there's no mining activity, and that can actually influence the price quite a bit as well because the miners have a added benefit of promoting the coin for you know increasing their value, whereas the pre mined ones are often sold off in ICOs, um, and you know technology wise they, they often don't bring much extra to the table um, so let's pick one for a trade let's have a look 
And again, I want to probably base it on the trade volume to see what is being traded at the moment. No verge, I'm not a big fan of either. I'm sorry, Robert, but that's the way it is. Uh, what is this up? Okay. So again, have a look at the coin market cap, see what's the story about this coin. Substratum. Now it's ranking in the top 100, which is interesting. It's high enough in the price. Let's see what kind of history it has. So it seems to be a new enough coin as well. So let's do a bit of a search on this one. Okay, they don't seem to be on GitHub, maybe they're on Slack, but doesn't matter. Let's have a quick look what they're doing. So the open source allows you to allocate spare computing resources to make internet a free and fair place for the entire world. Okay. Gets paid each time they serve content. Okay, so this is just this giant CDN, which, you know, can make sense. Um, CDN is a content distribution network. So all of these coins have often something that they you know they use the computing power for. Um, now what we see as well is there's a quite a bit of a, a drop in price. So if we look at over time what's happening, so we had a slight drop, peak down again. Okay. So it seems to be stabilized. The price on coin market cap seems to be in line with the price here as well. Um, and let's see. So yeah, there is a bit of information on it. Okay, normally if you do bigger investments, you want to spend a bit of time actually figuring out what they're doing. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is actually get them a bit cheaper. So another thing as well that you should look at is the volume. So you can see again, this one actually, a lot of them are holding it for quite a bit of high price. And then here's your little price gap, right? It's, it's a small volume of, you know, 7,000 of the coins um, that are being sold off cheap and the rest is actually has a quite a bit of a spike. So let's see if we can get into that spike. Um, so what we can do is we can say, well, we buy for, you know, the 100% of balance that we have and we're going to match up I'm gonna match up this guy here. So you can see this this person here, they're kind of eager to buy one and they're, they're increasing the price quite a bit uh, versus the rest. So I'm gonna just go slightly underneath it, uh, match it up 100%, make someone is still 19, and then put in my buy order. Okay. So the buy order is set now, right? So I can actually uh, buy them now and as soon as this price is matched up I'm gonna have ownership of 19 of these sub coins um, so my order is here right you can see there's a little orange line to it so let's wait and see what happens okay some uh, time has passed as you can see because uh, it's dark behind me already. Um, so it took a while for the, um, the trade to finish. Um, and you can see here, I actually had to adjust my bit slightly because when I put it in there, it actually started climbing. Um, and of course, when I put the bit in there at a higher price, it started dropping. But yeah, that's no surprise when it comes to uh, cryptocurrencies. Now, um, if you have a quick look at the, the market again, and we'll just refresh this so we can see I bought it here and of course it's dropped a little bit. Um, the top levels, you know, there's not much big difference in there. So uh, we'll, let it, we'll let it stand for a while. Now let's say, especially with the time difference, uh, because this is a 24 hour trading platform. Um, let's say you want to sell at a, at a certain price. So what you can do is you can actually already put in an order for selling it. Right. So in this case, what I can do is I can say, well, if the price goes up to 1.7, I want to sell half of my sub coin here. Right. Um, 
maybe I will make it one point. Yeah, one seven is a decent price. Um, now looking at the twenty-four hour high, it was actually on one nine. So let's see if it reaches that high again. So I'm gonna put it in there for fifty percent of my total. Yeah. So I'll sell that. Oh, okay. Total must be at least zero point two. Now that's a limitation of um, Binance, where if the price, the total price is less than 0.02, it won't allow you to sell. Right. So instead, what we'll do is we'll sell. Let's see half of it. Let's say we'll sell 10 of it. No, that's not enough. 11, 11. So we'll sell 10, uh, 11 of it. But then, of course, next time I want to sell them, uh, it needs to be a higher price. Otherwise, it won't sell at all. So instead of all of those, I'll go for the all of them and I'll put it just a little bit higher, put on 20, right? So that's a decent jump. Um, and now we put the sell order in there and you can see it's as an open order, right? So as soon as the price is gonna be hit, it's automatically gonna sell for this amount. Yeah. So that's about it. There's nothing more special that you need to do. Um, one tip uh, that I would give you is if ever you wanna sell, let's say you want to cash out for dollars, uh, trade them over to a different exchange, right? The reason why is different exchanges have different prices. So for example, if I look at my uh, Ripple coin, right? So the Ripple coin here has a value of, at the moment, probably $1.8. Let's have a look. Mm-hmm. So current value is, well, it doesn't give me the dollar value. Oh yeah. yeah. So the dollar value here is uh, um, and there you can actually exchange Ripple directly for dollars or euro. And you can already see the price, it's 1.98, right? So I can sell 1.98, which means if you will transfer your Ripple to the other exchange and then sell them for dollar, you make at least 20 cents uh, per Ripple coin. So if you have a, you know, in this case, 75 times 20 cents, you know, that's a decent amount of money that you can actually make. And it's really for your cash out strategy because the Bitcoin prices themselves are also higher. So it wouldn't um, always make sense to actually transfer them over for Bitcoin because you get the same amount of Bitcoin. Um, now that said, there are options where you can do what's called arbitrage between different exchanges. So one exchange will have a good price for Bitcoin um, and you can trade in your other alt currency, get uh, more Bitcoin back and then trade them, you know, send them over to the, the cheaper exchange to buy more of those currencies, right? Um, so it's just a, a, a matter of finding the balance uh, because of course you pay fees and all the other stuff as well. So hope this was uh, informal. Um, if it gets a, a good approach, then I'll, um, I'll do a couple more videos. Okay, thank you.